Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to Learn Physics. In today's topic, we are going to discuss about some of the one more questions from the chapter Electrostatics. In today's new session, we are covering the topics Electric Charges, Coulomb's Law and Superposition Principle. So before starting the session, you will just go through the topics and the important points once more. And the topic, the important points are, there are two kinds of charges, positive polarity and one with the, another with the negative polarity. So before starting one more thing, I want to tell you uh, that is yesterday's topic, if you watched, then these two slides will be the same only. Because if somebody didn't see that or didn't watch that, I thought I'll just uh, keep that slides also. So the rest of the points are charges acquired by the objects on rubbing against each other must be equal and opposite. Like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. In gold leaf electroscope, the gold leaf electroscope is used for detecting the presence of charges and their polarity. How we can charge a, uh, an object that is charging by conduction also there, charging by induction also there. Charging by induction means without touching the body, if we are bringing it near to it, it will be getting charged, right? So the phenomenon of charging an uncharged conducting body by bringing a charged body near to it without making a direct contact between two bodies. And the next one is, what are the basic properties of charges? First one, additivity of charges. We can just add the charges by considering its sign. Next is, charges are conserved. Next point is, quantization of charges. That is Q equals NE. The value is charge of electron that is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Next is Coulomb's law. The force of interaction between any two point charges is directly proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. So the force we, get, we have given it as the equation magnitude alone and representing f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 by r square. The value of epsilon 0 is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb square per newton per meter square. And one, value of 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is 9 into 10 to the power 9 coulomb to the power minus 2 newton meter square. If q1 q2 is greater than 0, then it will be greater than 0. But both are positive or both are negative. Then there will be a repulsive force. And if Q1 to be less than 0, then there will be an attractive force. Next is superposition principle. In superposition principle, the total force on any charge due to a number of other charges at rest is the vector sum of all the forces on that charge due to the other charges taken one at a time. So if we want to find out the charge at one point and n number of charges are around it. So each charge, how much force will be giving to this uh, particular charge which we are considering. So the total force, everything we can add together. That's why if at origin one charge is there, then the charge due to origin and the first charge. The charge at the origin and the second Q2 charge at the origin and the Q3. Like that, we will add everything and find out. That is F0, F equals F01 plus F02 plus etc. plus F0N. So, we are starting the one more conclusion. So, first one is an isolated conducting sphere is given a positive charge. Does its mass increase, decrease or remains same? An isolated conducting sphere is given a positive charge. So it's given a positive charge. So it's a electrons, it is 
electrons removed from it electrons are removed from it if electrons are removing with a mass will increase decrease of say mass will be decreasing so its mass decreases slightly as it loses some electrons since it is having a positive charge losing electrons so mass of the uh, conducting sphere will be decreasing slightly due to this positive charge okay so the next one a glass rod rubbed with silk acquires a charge plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb put the charge on the silk tell me uh, see glass rod is rubbed with silk so glass rod is acquiring a charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb so how much charge silk will be obtaining? It's just negative. See, yesterday also I told you 5 coulomb 5 plus 5 if it is absorbing the other one. Fur and uh, glass rod while we are considering fur is getting a 5 coulomb 5 unit negative charge means this glass rod will be getting 5 unit positive charge. So here how much charge it will be? It will be minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb. One will be getting positive means other will be getting the negative charge. Charge on the silk is equal and opposite to charge on the glass rod. Therefore Q equals minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb. Next one is, is the force acting between two point charges Q1 and Q2 kept at some distances in air attractive or repulsive when q1 q2 greater than zero q1 q2 less than zero the cause of charging us see uh, you tell me q1 q2 is greater than zero or q1 q2 less than zero then it will be q1 q2 greater than zero means both are positive or both are negative q1 and q2 are positive or q1 and q2 are negative then both are positive or both are negative means it will be a repulsive force q1 q2 less than zero means one is positive and other is negative then it will be an attractive force right so we have when q1 q2 greater than zero it will be a repulsive force and if q1 q2 less than zero means it will be attractive you should think it is greater than zero since it is greater than zero you can consider that it is one is positive and the other is negative okay why is it easier to charge a balloon on a dry day than on a humid day what will happen in humidity means some moisture will be there right so moisture will be uh, helping to leak the electrons so it will be easier to uh, so leaking of electrons are there means with the charge will be existing over there no right so on a dry day it will be easier to charge the balloon so because of the moisture because the moisture allows some charge to leak from the balloon so in a humid day moi through moisture charge will be leaking but that's why it is easier to charge a balloon on a dry day. So the next one is, what is the force of repulsion between two charges of one coulomb each kept one meter apart in vacuum? What is the force of repulsion between two charges of one coulomb each? So Q1, Q2, both are one coulomb. Distance is one meter. How we can find out? it's vacuum that is epsilon zero is given right so it is epsilon zero only so what will be the force f is equal to one by four pi epsilon zero q one q two by r square so applying the formula we will be getting the final answer see here instead of one by four pi epsilon zero we can uh, substitute as nine into ten to the power nine q one value is one coulomb q two value also one coulomb distance also 1 meter. So we will get the answer as 9 into 10 to the power 9 meter. Clear? So the next one is two identical metallic spheres A and B each carrying a charge Q ripple each other with a force capital F. 
a third metallic uncharged sphere C of the same size is made to touch the spheres A and B alternately and then removable. What is the force of repulsion between A and B? So while I'm reading these questions, please try to pause the video and try to solve the answers. Clear? So two identical metal, two spheres are there. Each are having a charge Q. Same charge in B plus, so it is repelling. Repels, repulsive force. A third metallic uncharged sphere of same size is made to touch the sphere A and B alternately and then removed away. So A is first C is in touch with A, then that C is in touch with B. Okay. So how we can find out the repulsive, what is the force of repulsion between A and B? See, A and B are there, repulsive force, each are having charge Q. First, A is in touch with C. So, what will happen? Charge will be equally distributed between A and C. So, Q will become Q by 2 and Q by 2. I'll show that with a diagram. See here, you can see here like, see, this is charge Q, C is uncharged. While it is touching, what will happen? This Q by 2 and this is Q by 2. Together it became Q. Now C is in touch with B. What will happen? These two B and C together, what will be the total force? Divided by 2 because total charge will be equally distributed. So Q plus Q by 2, the whole divided by 2 will give you the charge of B and charge of C. Now we got the value of B as 3 Q by 4 and the value of A as Q by 2. You can find out the final answer for force. Can you do that now? Hmm? Try to do that. The answer is, see, if R is the distance between A and B, what will be the force? 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 Q square by R square. Then, then uncharged sphere C of same size is placed in contact with A. Each acquires a charge which redistributes equally between A and C. That's what I am shown over here, Q by 2 and Q by 2. Right. Then, next when C is in contact with B, again redistribution of charges are happening. Right. So, Q plus, this is Charge of B is Q, charge of C is Q by 2. So Q plus Q by 2 divided by 2. The whole will be 3Q by 4. So each one is getting a charge of 3Q by 4. So now what is the charge of A? Q by 2. Charge of B is 3Q by 4. So you can find out the final answer. What is the new force? That is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q by 2 into 3Q by 4 by R square. So you will get it as 3 by 8 into 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q square by r square. What is that 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q square by r square? Capital F. So it will be 3 by 8 times the initial force. Clear? Now the next question is, vehicles carrying inflammable materials usually have metallic rocks touching the ground during motion. Why? Why the met metallic ropes will be there? If, if the uh, bigger vehicles, that is very, um, uh, in, especially for low carrying vehicles will be using this metallic ropes. What is the reason? Because the vehicles and the wheels as well as the metallic parts, while it is touching the ground, or while they are rubbing against each other, what will happen? Electrostatic charge will be developing over there. So these charges, so can, um, uh, see, uh, inflammable materials are there. So it can, charging can cause a, uh, an accident, right? So instead of avoiding, for avoiding those accidents, we will be keeping this metallic uh, box touching the ground. So the charge which is producing additionally will be passing through this metallic box towards the ground. So the answer, you can write like this, when a vehicle moves, its body gets charged on account of friction with the air. The tires also accumulate the charge on account of friction 
between the tires and the rod. The metallic rods from the vehicle touching the ground enable the accumulated charges to flow to earth. Clear? So these are some of the questions, one more questions which I uh, have given just to clear your idea about this electric charge, superposition, principle and column stuff. I think it is clear for you. So if you like the channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.